This is CPM Calculus Chapter 2, number 95. We're told inscribed rectangles are below a curve and circumscribed rectangles are above a curve. We're given the function y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared and told to complete the following problems. So part A is basically saying calculate the area under the curve using four inscribed rectangles. So we're looking for the area under the curve, approximating it, right? From negative 2 is between x is between 2. Okay, so all we're doing is looking at our curve. Well, it's not f here. It is y, right? So we're looking at the area under y, and we're looking at between negative 2 and 2. So first, let's look more in depth at what does it mean for these rectangles to be inscribed? So if this is our curve, which, or if it, for this curve, I'm just going to make it, okay? Inscribed rectangles means they do not ever leave or pass above our curve, right? Like, like this, like this, like this this, right, they never go above the curve, always stay below it, okay, um, oops, this one is small, right, circumscribed go above, right, so for example, for this curve, Right, circumscribe would mean that we're going to go outside of our curve, right? So, like this. So we're always a little above our curve, right? We're never just below it. We're always going to be a little above it. Okay, so for approximating area using inscribed, okay, inscribed rectangles, we're going to approximate the area, and our area is going to be equal to a little bit less than the actual area because we're not including all of these regions right here. Right? We're not including this, this region. All of this is not being calculated. Right? We're missing that. We're missing that. We're missing that. Right? All that is not being added up when we're estimating the area. Likewise, when we're looking at circumscribed rectangles, we are overestimating the area by all of this above the curve, right? Wherever the rectangle goes outside of our curve, we're overestimating that much. Okay, so now let's look at this specific problem. Um, if we graph this with our calculator, it's going to show us half of a circle with a radius of 2. So it goes like this, right? It's 2, negative 2, oops, and 2, right? And if we didn't know that, we could look, if we squared both sides, we would get the formula x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is a, an entire circle with radius 2, okay? But since we have just the square root, the positive square root, we're only going to get this half of the circle, okay, where it's above our x-axis and values are positive. Okay, so for part A, we want to approximate the area using inscribed triangles. So that means our triangles go below. Now, how do we do this? Okay, so one way you could do this is to put a rectangle here, right? If it goes here, right? A rectangle goes right there. Another rectangle goes right here, right? Because we can't go above our curve ever. And this rectangle, ooh, we can't, we cannot go up here because it would be above then. So this one has to have a height of zero. So let me erase this. It has to have a height of zero, right? Because if it went up here, it would go outside of the curve right there or right there, you know, we want it to be inscribed. Likewise, on the left here, 
our rectangle has a height of 0 as well. Okay, so our approximate area then becomes using four inscribed rectangles. So for part A, we want to use four using four inscribed rectangles. We get the base of this rectangle is one unit. Oops. Base is one unit. The height of this rectangle is zero. Plus, the base of this rectangle is one unit. The height of this rectangle, well, the height we get, we're getting basically from the left point of this rectangle, right? The height of this rectangle is the height of our function at x equals to negative 1. So to calculate that, at x equals to negative 1, y equals to square root of 4 minus negative 1 squared. I'm just plugging negative 1 into our, into our equation there, and I get 4 minus, well, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so 4 minus 1 is square root of 3. So here I'm going to plug in the height v square root of 3, plus the base of this rectangle is 1 unit. The height of this rectangle is the height here at x equals to 1. So at x equals to 1, y is equal to 4 minus 1 squared, which is square root of 3. So here we have square root of 3 again. And that makes sense because this right here is an even function, right? It reflects across the y-axis, so at negative 1, the output is square root of 3. At positive 1, the output is also square root of 3. And at 2, so the base is 1, at 2, the height, again, is 0, right? We can even plug in 2, so at x equals 2, y is equal to square root of 4 minus 2 squared, which is 0, square root of 0, which is 0, okay? So we add these together and we get our area approximately 0 plus square root of 3 plus square root of 3 plus 0, which is 2 square root of 3. Plug that into our calculator and we get 4, no, sorry, 3.4641. Okay, and what are the units? Well, we could say units squared because we're not given any units, but we know base times height is going to be base units times height units, so it's unit squared. Okay, so this here is our approximate area of y on between our x-axis and y from negative 2 to positive 2. Okay, and that's using, again, four inscribed rectangles. All right. So now let's look at using for part B, we want to calculate the area of our function, again, from negative 2 to positive 2. This time, we want to approximate it using four circumscribed rectangles. Okay, so again, we have our semicircle. Right, it's still going to go negative 2, start there, and go to a height of 2. But now we want to use four rectangles that go outside of our curve. So here we're going to use this rectangle. You see how it goes outside and there's an extra area right there. We're going to use this height to find this rectangle, that one's circumscribed as well. Here's another one, and here's another one. Okay, so now these rectangles are all circumscribed, and they go above our actual curve. So to find the area approximation, we take the base times the height of each one of these rectangles and add them together. Okay, so each one is going to be one unit at the base, right? So the first one is base is one unit. The height now, well, we get the height by plugging in x equals to negative 1, right? And when we did that, we get at x is negative 1, we get square root of 3. Plus, well, now we have 
this rectangle, again base 1, height is at x equals to 0. Right? That's how we get the height of this rectangle. At x equals to 0, we get square root of 4 minus 0, which is square root of 4 or 2. Okay. The next rectangle has a base of 1, and we get the height of this rectangle from x being 0 again, which is 2. We just calculated it there. And finally, we get for our last rectangle of base 1, the height is calculated from x equal to 1, and that is equal to the square root of 3. Okay, so that's equal to square root of 3 plus 4 plus square root of 3. F4 is the 2 plus the 2. Or 2 square root of 3 plus 4. Okay, we plug that into our calculator again, and we get 7.4641 units squared. Okay, sorry, that's my dot. No, beta, come on. <laughs> anyway, that is part B, and let's go on to part C. So, part C says calculate the actual area. Actual area. Well, using our answers to part A and B, well, you know, using the circumscribed area, we know it's going to be an overestimate, right? Overestimate. And again, that's because of this area above the curve that we're calculating and adding in. And for our inscribed below, remember in part A, that estimate is going to be an underestimate. Because we are not we are not including all of the area that we have when we use this rectangle above in our curve. Okay? So the actual area we can estimate then to be, I guess you could say the average, right? You can just basically take the actual area we can approximate to be the average of our underestimate and overestimate. And so that's going to be, what was it? It was 3 point, in part A we had 3.4641 units squared. And in part B, we have 7.4641 units squared. So we add those and divide by 2. It gets our arithmetic average or arithmetic mean, which is, let me just put that in. Wait, four, six, which is, so again, we want to use approximately, because even though we're looking for actual area, we're still approximating, which is approximately 5.4641 units squared, right? So using parts A and B, this is how we can get the actual area, well, not actual, so this question isn't very worded or isn't worded very well because it's still approximately so a better approximation of the area right a better approximation of the area is taking the average of the overestimate and underestimate which is that if we want the actual area we don't use parts a and b right now we can do it by looking at well this we already said is what it's going to be half of a circle with radius 2, right? Well, if we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, then we know half of a circle is 1 half pi r squared. So if we plug in our radius of 2, we're going to get the actual area of our curve from negative 2 to x positive 2 is equal to, not approximately, but exactly 1 half pi and our radius is 2 squared. Okay, so that's equal to 4 divided by 2, 2 pi units squared. Okay, 
And how close is our approximation using parts A and B to this? Well, what's 2 times pi? Plug that in your calculator, and you get that is approximately, as I'm going to approximate it, is 6.28319. I'll just stop here. Units squared. Okay. So our actual area is approximately 6.283 units squared, where our better approximation only got us 5.4641 units squared. Okay, and our overestimate we saw was 7.4641, and our underestimate was 3.4641. Okay, so this is a better estimate than our over and our under, but it's still not exact, right? This is exact. Okay, so this is the end of CPM Calculus Chapter 2, Number 95.